So I'm just out here, you know, you know, mining and looking for things like iron using my lovely divining rod because I'm sorely out of iron and I stumbled across this thing. Um, so I think I can go in here. I'm not going to use the door as it's going to be really hard. So we have an archaeologist trading a few things like bones for emeralds. Ooh, an archaeologist hat for a couple eight emeralds, you know, what do you got in here? Nothing. You got absolutely, you know what? You got this for me. I'll take that. Don't fall. Don't, don't, don't fall. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm out here just doing my thing. Oh, of course. Hunting for iron because we are sorely out. Um, actually, I should probably check my, uh, my mine. Like right over here is my lovely mine that, uh, or my quarry, I should say. And I should be able to get up to the top. There's gotta be a good amount of iron up here. It's gotta be, right? It didn't mine all the way down, but it should have mined a little bit of iron. Let's check. I know I got tons of cobblestone, which is great. And yeah, I got about 23 iron. That's not bad at all. Um, that's just something we're sorely running out of is iron. I just, I need so much of it. Um, it just, that's, a, that's the reason why, um, ore doubling exists in modern Minecraft is just simply because of the sheer amount of iron that is needed for machines. It's just absolutely insane. Now I did notice this. There is this. Oh, ow. Well, he just knocked me off, didn't he? There, uh, there's a little bit of a, a mine shaft here. I think I should go after it and see what is down here. Oh, not you. Okay. Now this guy's after. Oh, I'll take the iron though. Um, I'm kind of looking for some chests. So I'm doing a little bit, you know, I'm still old fashioned going through this. Ooh, looking for mine carts like that. Uh, that's a vampire. Okay. The powerful bill. Oh, not so powerful, is he? Ooh, there's another, there's a chest. This is, yeah, this is in here. Jungle sealed crate. Hmm. Some actual loot. Like we got some gl random glass. All right. What is going to be inside this thing? I wonder. Okay. Not much. This is actually pretty good. I like these help. I'm trapped in a video game. I feel you there. Um, Wow, this is everywhere. The fortune's uh, favor is just completely, it's just everywhere. What is this? Art striker from van vampirism. Some manuscripts just randomly in here. And this right here, uh, wand uh, siphon upgrade. Don't really need that. I was going to look today at what we can buy. There's a lot of stuff we can buy. Some things you can buy actually go directly towards quests. There's a fisherman's crate string. All right, we got another. There's a lot of crates in here. This actually can't. If you find one of these, you're going to be good for a while. Look at that. We just got a golden apple. Soul vials. I don't have to make them. We just got some soul vials. Uh, that is actually really good. We, that allows us to move mobs around for one thing. And also, I mean, it's used for several other things. It kind of fits the theme of Ender.io, which is what we kind of dabbled in or have been dabbling in. All right, I'm going to continue looking this way. All right, this is looking pretty good, though. Pretty promising. So right after I got done mining, I encountered a friendly creeper and it dropped this uh, this little enchanted looking mystery egg. And I'm kind of scared to place it. Also, where did my worm go? I swear he was just here. Does it despawn? No way. He's got to be just underground or something. Anyways, let's see what this does. This is mystery egg. Oh, look at the little guy. Oh no, it's a little, what does it say? What does it say? I can't see it because he's just running around. Hey, little fella. Hey, supporter creeper. Literally just going to follow me around. <laughs> That's so cute. We have a little friend now, you know, just a little happy creeper. That's going to follow us around everywhere. I don't know if that's going to get annoying or what, but he is super cute. 
I mean, not gonna lie, he's super cute. So now that we have some cool stuff going on in our base and we have a little bit of a vibe going on, let's go ahead and take a look at the shop because there's a lot of things we can buy. And in the black market, I have enough right now to be able to buy a dragon egg. Yeah, we can buy a dragon egg and literally raise ourselves a dragon at this point. But I don't want to do that. I want to take a look at some of these things. Like we have the lightning hammer from Electro Bob's Wizardry. This thing. Like, like, oh, it made him charged. Stop, stop. No, no, stop. Oh, he, I, uh, uh, why? Why you do that? How do I remove this? Oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I just shift right clicked on it. Well, that was anticlimactic, but that was, I mean, it killed my guy. Hopefully we get another one of those. Anyways, there's a lot of stuff we can buy, right? All the inscribers, there's stolen quest loot, right click to open common loot boxes. Okay. Um, we have this thing, which we can buy, which actually is a questing item, which just save us a little bit of time. Ooh, we just got an iron drum. I actually need that. That is super nice we just got that because I actually need that thing. Wow, that is, that is really loud. You know that? That is really obnoxious. Anyways, <laughs> I needed that because this drum is actually full. So I'm gonna place the drum over here. Um, yeah, this right here is a one-time use item and it summons these guys to basically fight for you. Which I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't need to infest my island with these. It's actually pretty gross and pretty loud. All right, guys, you can leave me alone. Come on now, leave me alone. Well, we're going to have to forever have that. You know what? We can kill our own. Oh. We can kill our own. It's a mutiny. It's a it's straight up mutiny. It doesn't look like it drops any other drops, which is actually not a good, not a bad thing. Okay, so. With that done, we do see that that is kind of glitched out there for some reason. It does that with most of those tools for some reason. Let's go back into the market. Because um, there is some things I actually would like to buy. Um, a portal gun is really nice. This market box is kind of, I don't know, it, it, it might be worth it and it might not at the same time. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I really would like to get my hands on. Um, now, we do have all of this stuff, which is like explosion stuff as well. <laughs> Like if you wanted to just buy your way, I mean, just buy an antimatter explosive and just completely blow up your entire base. There's a lot of oddities, which I have not really got to look at too much. Like a golden egg is actually kind of cool from open blocks. It'll make a mini me version of you. A lot of these things you can just buy. Like I was using ender pearls for a while. There's not too much else that I really want to buy. Maybe rat stuff. Like if there was a rat spawn egg, that'd be really nice. That way you can just spawn a rat because I've not really seen any rats underground. So I would have to have, I'd have to set out the trap the thing where they spawn, which I think is on the garbage. I already eat for torches. And we can also buy food. That's not bad either. And there's like a resource thing where you can buy certain resources. Okay. So yeah, for the most part, I mean like the cool stuff to buy is right here. I can get a creative jetpack pretty quickly. Um, by doing a lot of quests. Waystones are gonna be very pow powerful as well. I think I'm actually going to like get um, a few of those. You Oh, I can buy another giant death worm egg. A rotten egg, that's from ice and fire. I don't know what that does either. So yeah, a lot of stuff. Anti-radiation storage box, that could be useful later on potentially. I don't know. That's just something to kind of look forward to. So I have a plan for all of that essence that we're generating and pretty much just kind of letting go to waste because um, we're not utilizing it yet. So what I want to do is actually take this essence. Boy, that was some scary sounds. And I want to use a fluid transfer node. This thing is amazing. If we put it here, it is going to build up with fluid, hopefully. Yep, you can see it start to build up, build up there. We can't see the fluid, but believe me, it is there. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to wirelessly transfer fluids. Very simply, very, very simple, which is uh, what I'm all about. I love simple. So what I need to do 
is for the machines that actually need to utilize it, which I'm going to work with industrial foregoing machines. We have an enchantment applicator, an enchantment factory, and an enchantment extractor. So there is going to be a little bit of need for these things. I think I'm going to do the enchantment applicator. Let's see, the extractor probably goes first. And then we'll do this thing right here doesn't really need anything but power and books. And then we have the enchantment factory, which will use some automation and then an enchantment applicator, which will allow us to put everything together. This requires essence and uh, some things are going to require some power. So what I can do is go ahead and move this out. Let's go ahead and space these out. Um, this I'm going to have to separate them. Uh, this is going to need fluid. I think this one also needs fluid. So these two need to be linked to the fluid, put the fluid on the right, and then each one of these need power, right? So I'm gonna put the power over here, just throw the GPSs in, that should feed these all with a little bit of power, and then we throw the fluid, and that should start sending fluid their way. There we go, perfect. And uh, that, in this right here, should work perfectly, right? We should start to see essence build up in these things. Perfect. Now I do want to backlog eventually. Um, I was going to look at tanks. I think um, for decorative light tanks, open blocks has probably one of the best tanks to use as it's like see-through like this. Um, so let's see if I like take this back wall here. And I changed the uh, the back wall. I changed this to be, I don't know, another brick pattern. Um, it'll eventually fill up. I hope that this actually shows like a green texture though. That's kind of what I want. Um, cobble, let's do cobblestone. And we'll fill that in. And then we'll use this tank. And then I think hooking a GPS to the top should work like once everything is filled this will start to take its place let's go ahead and just link it to the top right here and that should start filling that tank up um i mean honestly this is just for for looks in my opinion and i hope i don't know if this is going to glow like regular stuff glows so it's just going to be green and it is going to fill up look at that it is starting to fill up and it kind of gives a look to the rest of this nice um, I, I kind of want to dump the rest of my tanks, though. I don't think I have any more fluid lasers. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait for more mobs to be killed. But this thing is absolutely insane with what you can actually do with it. Um, you know that enchanted sword we have here? Well, that enchanted sword is going to get some use. Um, let's go ahead and get a... Actually, let's get some quartz. And we're going to use this over here in our alley smelter. Because, of course, we have tons of dark steel now. Put this to alloys only. And throw some quartz in here. And this is going to produce some special glass. And we can use this fused quartz to make fluid conduits. And uh, these things are definitely useful for what we're about to work with. I don't need the... Uh, I just need the pressurized. There we go. Awesome. So I'll be able to tank... I'll be able to take the uh, tank here. And hook this in. Do extract, always active. That should fill everything from this tank. Should also fill these guys. It's kind of separating and filling everything, but it should also fill this as well. Um, I should probably go ahead. I should probably go ahead and actually grab my other tank. I do have a, a whole other drum that's filled with essence, um, but this is gonna kind of get us started. So things we're gonna need is books. So anytime we run across bookshelves, you're going to need to work on that. This right here basically automates enchanting. So yeah, you throw books in here, it's going to start enchanting them automatically. And it's going to give you, of course, random enchants. Um, now, if you have tools that have enchants, like um, we were getting a bunch of tools and stuff that did have some enchantments on them, kind of looking and seeing if we did. Okay, so this bow right here has an enchantment on it. We can actually throw it in the enchantment extractor. And if we give it a book and we put the tool in, it's going to pull the enchantment off of it. Now, another cool thing is we can actually in, uh, apply enchants and apply multiple enchants. It's going to use this essence that we pretty much have 
and a limited amount of, right? Because we're always going to have more of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, we basically have the ability to continuously enchant things. And, I mean, just get as much as we... I mean, as long as we have books, we pretty much have the ability to max enchant things. So, let's take this storage crate and conduit. Item conduit is going to be pretty decent for this. Um, and then probably just a chest. Just to see what kind of cool enchants we can get. So I'm going to have a chest. It's going to go up here. Storage crate over here. We're going to do this very simple. Um, we're going to do the item inputs, which is going to be from the up, up here. And then the output, of course, is going to be from the right side. And that should be pretty straightforward. And then this, these slots right here can just be turned all off. That's for like powering items, to be honest. And then the fluid we shouldn't have to worry about either. Okay, so we set this to always active and insert. And then same goes for this. Just to get a very simple setup, this is going to start extracting the uh, the enchants. And so we just throw, I don't know, 32 books in here and see what all enchants we actually get. It will take a little bit of time, but we should see an entire chest over here Filling with enchants. Now you will see these enchants that have multiple enchants on them. You can also take it over here as long as you have a book and you can separate all the enchants from there as well. Very cool and probably one of the easiest to use enchantment systems. I think you know, as far as mods go, this is a very simple process. So if you actually want to specifically focus on a tool, another thing you can do is take your tool and just enchant it, right? And so what this is going to do is it's going to put some uh, different uh, enchants on here. So we got Smite 5, which is actually not too bad, and Decay, right? But if I want to take them off, well, I just need to apply some books. And voila, it doesn't tear your thing up. It doesn't tear your tool up, but it does take it off. And you can keep trying until you get something awesome like this. Like that's, that's actually not bad. And like, if you still want to add more things to this, right? You can totally do that. So like, if I want to add mending and I also want to add, let's see, it's already got decay on it. So if I want to add unbreaking and I want to add lifesteal, let's go ahead and pull the lifesteal because I don't think it will let you, I don't think it'll let you do that. You can separate like that. So we put lifesteal in here. I think there was another one. This has leeching. Like, if we can put both of those on there, I think you can. Um, we'll be able to find out here soon. Um, there we go. There was Leech 3. And so what we can do is we can take our sword right here and say, I want to apply Leech to it. And then I also want to apply Unbreaking. Will it not let me because I have Soulbound? Don't know. Mending? Put Mending on there. Unbreaking for some reason will not work. Lifesteal will work. So on this thing, we have leeching and lifesteal and mending and sharpness for and unbreaking. It's, uh, yeah, this thing is looking pretty crazy. Uh, for some reason, unbreaking will not go on there. I don't know why, but it definitely won't. Um, and you can definitely apply books and do books this way too. Like if you want to do more, uh, you want to put more things on a sword, you can totally do it. So this is up to like 12 attack damage. Like this thing is looking really sick. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention is um, where we're currently transferring all of the fluid, right? We have it going into here, but in all honesty, I definitely want after it fills up this tank, I want it to start filling up this. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this real quick. Let's get, um, let's actually go back and grab that GPS that we had over here. We have this GPS. This one is actually filling up the tank. I'm going to go ahead and change it to this black hole tank. And this tank is basically unlimited. It's like unlimited storage. And so this will be extracting and this will be set to insert. I just want it to be used as decoration. And then the rest, of course, is going to work its way out. So let's go ahead and place this back in. And that's going to give us like a permanent place for our essence. Really, really cool. 
Like, I am really enjoying this. This still has a whole lot of essence in it. So I'll just hook it in over here and set that to extract. Always active. Just, just so it'll, it'll eventually drain out. But yeah, I think we should put this sword to the test. I think we should go see some things. Can't really enchant this as it's already really enchanted. I don't think it can be enchanted, can it? I'm actually, I don't, I'm pretty sure Tinker's stuff cannot be enchanted. Yeah, I can't. Um, so we would have to enchant other gear if we plan on doing anything special with that. But I think we should put this sword to the test and see if we take any damage. Like this thing should basically insta heal us every time we kill something with it. So off we go to find out how good this thing actually is. And I also wanted to see like how is how how bad is like our damage? Like we don't really take much damage, do we? Yeah, we're taking no damage from that shot. This guy, however, almost one shot killed that that skeleton. It did one shot kill that thing. It's almost okay. So it's a three shot on that, but it it recovers so fast that you can. I mean, you're ready to go. You are ready to go. Creeper just gets knocked back. That's just the built-in knockback that's on this thing. Absolutely insane. This thing, gone. Get wrecked. Now the zombie, it's got a, a bit more armor, so it's going to take a little bit more. But yeah, this is actually working pretty good. Oh, this guy has shielding though. Those effects are going to probably be some of the hardest to cope with in this pack, I think. So what a better way to test our new sword then to literally well let's get away from that guy to literally go down here let's first let's walk up here open this chest see what it's got to offer uh vampire slayer Ooh, that's a i didn't even know that was an enchant these have some pretty good enchants as well like we could totally strip the enchants off the of tools so a cool place to test that out a place that is always covered in enchanted tools just enchanted everything is just absolutely insane is well this area i do have two torch launchers i should probably keep one in the bag there we go and keep this here backpack you can stay there and i don't need a shovel i do need some diamond nuggets you're thinking i can access my storage from pretty much anywhere so we're safe there but this place is always crawling with just like everything okay um, is this guy supposed to be here? I have a feeling that's a no. Um, what is shooting that? Wait, what is that? What? Is that coming out of him? <gasps> it hits us with slowness. Oh no, and mining fatigue. Wait, what? Wait, does this guy get mined? Way. Okay, so I need I need I need that to disappear. What is in this chest? Nothing. Um, yeah, acrobatic. I, I have a feeling that that's not a good thing. And I don't know what to do with this guy. This is new to me. I'm getting hit. Wait. Is this what I think it is? There's a sword in his back. I don't know what to do with this thing. So after doing a little bit of looking, this guy is actually named Ferris. Um, and yeah, there's more going on with this guy than it may look. This guy's supposed to activate when you come close, and I think it might... You, I, I don't think it is, but it, it might be our invisibility cloak. No, this guy is just broken. So, we have a broken mob. There's not really much I can do to get past this guy, but let's ignore him for right now. Unfortunately, I, unless there's something I'm missing, maybe you guys let me know that in the comments. But from what I've seen, usually you just walk up to it and he, he just comes alive. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, just completely not coming alive for me. 
So, when it comes to this area, I mean, really, we're going to encounter a lot of mobs. A lot of mobs. So, um, having our armor ready to go is always great. Look at this. So, there's actually some things that we could uh, potentially gain from this area. Um, one, there's usually a loot room. If you get lucky and you find it, on like the first or second level, I think the second level is where it's at. First, you have to find the second level. Looks like we have a little bit of a leakage. There's a little bit of a le leakage going on over here. All right, let's get rid of these guys. Constant spawning. Oh, yep, we don't want those bad things. There we go. Just break the spawners. That's like the best thing to do. But you can make mob spawners out of these, like mob spawner rooms. I mean, I, we already have a mob spawner, so I'm not too concerned about that. You can also get cool banners. I'm liking that. Wow, we didn't really find much. I think maybe the other direction where uh, where the big guy's at. Oh, right here. This is a loot room. Look at that. There's a little furnace set up and everything. Don't think there's anything in these. I will take the anvil. That's kind of expensive. Oh, right here. Highly durable temple or tempered blade. So this is mending, unbreaking, and sharpness. I'll take it just for the unbreaking. And of course, if you want brick and you don't have to make it, best way to grab it right there. There's a lot of brick there. I guarantee someone automatically went to the comments is like, that's not a banner, that's a shield. Yeah, I just I just figured that out. <laughs> These are totally shields, but they are cool looking shields. To say, I mean, they're like custom design, like you have a banner on the shield is what I kind of meant to say. Um, yeah, I think I found, I mean, this is the first floor. Getting down to the second floor, minus this guy. This doesn't normally spawn in these things. It's just like a random coincidence that spawned. But this is this will take us down to the next level. Let's eat some epic bacon. And here we are. So, yeah, sometimes you'll find a couple of secrets. I want to see if I can actually find one of those secrets in here. Yeah, you can, you can actually blow up. That wouldn't be bad. Oh my gosh, these guys have headdresses on. Wow. By the way, somebody asked me how to access, I did see it in the comments. Somebody was wondering how you do the hats mod. Um, you just go inside your config. Wow, is that thing still shooting at me? Go into your configs and uh, controls and just search hat and then go to category. Um, I don't know if it's exactly called the hat. Um, usually it's the H key. So if you search key, things that are hooked to H, it should be one of these things, I think. Wow, it shows nothing is hooked to H, even though there's definitely, well, it was stuff hooked to H. I don't know, I usually set the hats mod to that. What is, why is there a pressure plate here? There's a probably like, I can't see. There's a pressure plate right there. Wait, that's meant to push you down. Ooh, dirty. That's super dirty. Here I am looking, trying to figure out how to get access to the hats menu. I I think there's another way. If you go to mods, it's just called hats um, from iChun. Oh, if it being iChun. Um, so you go to the config here and then go to hats and then go to key binds. And then here's the uh, open hats GUI and I'm going to set that to H. You have to do it from that menu. Um, if it's anything with uh, iChun, iChun's mods. So there we go. So we access the hats and then we can start putting all these different hats. And there's like a bunch of Patreon stuff and bunny rabbit ears, of course. Uh, the hand, a hot dogger, an inhaler, of course. That's always nice. <laughs> I have a flower on top of my head automatically that comes from uh, it's a Patreon donation. Um, perk, but actually it looks kind of good with the tree hat. I like that. I'm going to stick with the tree hat. <laughs> Just for the lulls. So for the most part, this place is pretty much the same. I've, I've done this, uh, this several times. I'm probably going to come back and we're going to go down to the very depths. I think at this point we're probably powerful enough to handle it, but there is some more things I actually want to do. Um, because I actually want to take 
Uh, and do this a little bit differently this time. There, I, I kind of want to take and uh, just completely demolish this entire area using a builder. I've never done that, and I think it'd be kind of cool to gain all these resources. But guys, I hope to see you guys in the next episode. If you guys did enjoy, please click that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, like over 80% of the people who are actually watching the videos, please click that, uh, that subscribe button. It really helps out. It does nothing for you other than maybe recommend my videos a little bit more. But it does help me out a ton, and I do appreciate it very much. Guys, I hope to see you in the next episode, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>